Hi everybody, it's Dee Slater with Create with Dee. Welcome to class. We are going to do Watercolor Pencils 101. So welcome and as you come on, um, I would love for you to say hi and um, let me know that you're watching this either whether it's um, live or when you come back and maybe watch the recording. It is going to be streaming both on Facebook and YouTube. So um, welcome wherever you're at and coming from. Well, I'm so excited to um, talk with you a little bit more about a technique or how to use the tools of watercolor pencils. We're going to be exploring three or four ways of how that you can get started using these pencils. I think you'll really enjoy it. This will be this week's class and I'll explain more later on if this is something that you would like to have as um, materials to go. Okay, let me turn the camera to our project and we'll get started. Give me one second here. Alrighty, so today what we're going to do again is watercolor 101 and there's um, pretty much three things that um, you need to get started and um, as always it's kind of um, ink in this case the ink is the watercolor pencils um, paper and then um, stays on ink to play with it and we'll explain all of this here in a little bit. So um, what is a watercolor pencil? Um, a watercolor pencil um, looks just like a regular pencil. You hold it just like a regular pencil, only it um, does have color on the tip of it. And the, um, the pigments that are in this, the color part of it, is designed to um, interact with water. And so that's why, hence the name, watercolor pencils. Um, so we can do a bunch of fun techniques with using these pencils and um, adding a little water. Um, some of the watercolor pencil 101 is that Stampin' Up! carries a basic um, watercolor pencil set. And in that set, you get all of these colors here um, that you have. So you get 13 colors to start with. And then um, if you happen to look online or in the catalog, you will notice um, another set called Watercolor Pencil Assortment 2. And there are um, 10 in here. And what these are are just other colors that kind of complement the basics. If you're getting started, I would recommend starting out with the, um, the larger pack with the basic colors. Um, and you'll be able to probably color just about anything you want. But then as you um, get more involved and you want more color options without having to blend, um, the watercolor assortment too might be for you. Paper that we need for um, doing our watercoloring. Um, we you can get the watercolor paper. Um, Stampin' Up! carries fluid 100 watercolor paper. Let me kind of just show you this a little more in detail. It's textured um, and it's got a high cotton fiber or a high cotton content, which means that it loves water and it will absorb it um, and blend and take the water the best. You can also use thick whisper or thick basic white and thick basic vanilla. Um, that would be great. You just want to avoid anything that's slick. So anything that's got a shimmer to it or a shine won't work because the water is going to sit on top of it. You need something that's a little thicker paper-wise for it to absorb. For today's um, video class, what we're doing is we're, I am going to show using the watercolor paper because again, that's what it's all about on it. Um, I will um, have here um, an attachment that you can find on my blog um, about, you know, what exactly is watercoloring and the benefits and the best paper, ink, et cetera. Kind of like, you know, and I'll, I'll give my pros and cons on like different options on that too. So if you're interested in seeing this document, I'll have a link posted um, where you can access that. Um, I just think it's a really nice tool, especially if you need either a reminder or you're just getting started with watercolor pencils. Okay, um, I think that's the, the whole housekeeping. So let's get started um, doing the one-on-one. -on -one. Again, I'm, um, I promise you that we'll see some finished products, but I think it's just best to kind of start out with um, like how to use it and play around. Um, like I said, watercolor pencils need water to um, 
you know, to activate the pigment that's in the pencils. So um, if you'd like, and this is kind of my preference, I like the, the water painters um, that Stampin' Up! has. You get three different brushes and brush tips, I should say. You kind of have a fine medium and then um, a more wide angled brush on it. Each of them will give you different um, looks and feels, and it's just totally um, your preference of which um, brush style that you like. You can also use the um, blender pens that Stampin' Up! has. These have liquid that's already loaded in it, specifically designed for watercoloring and spreading ink around. Um, the disadvantage to this, it's a one and done. Once you're done with your, um, once it dries out, once you use it, um, you have to replace it. Um, and my tip in there is like two, you need to store them horizontally because if you store them like this, all of the water will go the liquid will go to one end and then the other end gets um, dried out. Other ways that you can use water is if you want, you can just use paintbrush and water. Just get a cup of water, a paintbrush you have on hand, and you know you can just dip it in and, and use it that way. Um, so again, a lot of different ways to get started um, adding water. Maybe you have a paintbrush at home. Um, but if you like this technique, I really would um, recommend doing the water painters. And that's what I'm going to be using here today. All righty. Um, so I kind of, I tend to like the, um, the finer tip one. I just like the control that it gives me, especially on some of the examples we're going to do here. Um, the water painters, um, you just untwist it, fill this up with sink water or tap water. And then it has a little push button here and you do that to um, get the, the water going um, through the brush. You do wanna have a paper towel or a cloth hand nearby because we want to make sure that we um, wipe off our, our brush colors in between colors. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get started. Our first technique um, and things that you'd wanna practice is like, how do you um, use it? Let's see, I'll pick a color that's gonna be nice and vibrant here. So here I'm using the Melon Mambo and normally they come nice and pointy. We've been using them at class here lately and you just hold it like a pencil. And if you do a light pressure, you get a light mark. If I go a little darker, I get more intense. So depending on if you want a light look or a dark look, it's the pressure that you have on it. As you can see, I'm doing it at an angle. If I do it up and down, I get a more solid line, but that's hard to blend. Okay, let's see what this does. All right, so I am going to get my brush out again, my aqua, my water painter. They used to be called aqua painters. If I say that inadvertently, um, it's the water painters. And again, we just go ahead and we can apply water to the pigment. And then as you can see, it goes. I like to, when I do these large washes, I kind of do an oval kind of circular motion to blend in all of those lines. And I can stay right in the spot that I use the pencil, or if I want, I can carry that color around with me without putting the pencil down. We've actually got some stamps um, in the catalog that background stamps that are part of the set that actually kind of give that look. But when you see these backgrounds, that's what they're kind of, the stamps, that's what um, like the watercolor was designed for that inspiration. All right, so I'm gonna clean my brush, whether it's the paintbrush or these or the blender pen, you just do it till it runs clear. And now let's pick another color. Let's see, let's do, oh, Let's do this. Um, this is Calypso Coral. And, you know, I can go ahead and do that. I can press hard. I can press light. I can press really hard. I can press really light. And again, it's like I can even put a drop of water on there if I want and blend. So the more I do circular, the more it's kind of going to pick up that um, pigment and blend. And you don't have to do these one at a time. If I wanted to, I could sit there and I'm purposely just pressuring different or using different pressures on it. 
and then I can go ahead and pick up my next color and maybe blend a little bit of them in between. Come up and do one color here first. And I can stop whenever I want or I can really spread it out. You can see here, like when I went over it time and time again, it makes it a little harder um, to actually blend. But if that's a look that you're going for, you know, that's you can do that. Here I'm wiping it off because I'm sw switching colors. Get a little more water going. And so I can so put all of my colors down at once and then do my blending. Okay, so that's um, how you can play around with it and kind of get familiar with how watercolor pencils do. Um, at class yesterday here in person, you know, I'm encouraging um, everyone like to go home and cut off a small section of your uh, watercolor paper and just practice. You know, practice makes perfect. You can kind of see what pressure you like and um, do that. Okay, so this is one option here is to um, just practice and do a pretty blend. All right, so you might be saying, all right, Dee, that's great, but what can I do with that? Um, well, let's go ahead and we'll make a project using this technique here where we're just making a background. So here I've got a piece of our watercolor paper. This is cut at um, three and a half by five. And um, what I am using is, um, oh goodness, where's my stamp set? Whoops, hang on just a second. I wanted to give you um, three different looks today. So this is one of the celebration um, stamps that you can choose with a $100 order. Um, it's beautifully happy. and. Um, um, we're going to be making something with this nice, large, um, what I'm calling like, um, that's got line art in it, meaning that it's designed to be colored typically, or that, you know, it's going to have open spaces on the stamp. So I'm going to make a nice background for that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to um, the watercolor assortment too, since we've seen some of those. And I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo and granny apple green so i'm going to go ahead and um where is my so i have the stamp set here loaded on my stamparatus let me just kind of show you what this looks like see if i can get that for you um so there's the stamp set it's nice and nice and big on that and watercolors aren't for what i'm doing here it's not um what I want to say, it does not need to be perfect where exactly the um, the flowers start and the the leaves finished on it. So I'm just kind of going to add some color here on the top and then here's some greens. Again, you would kind of look at your stamp and you can see approximately where things might be positioned. Again, as you can tell, I'm using the side of the pencil. And let's bring this up here. I want a little more intense color. All righty. All right, so I made sure I had it cleaned. I'm kind of squeezing as I go because that my brush tip was dry. And I'm going to kind of add some of the, um, the Flirty Flamingo. See that it's super light. Hopefully you can see that. Add some water and you can drop some water right onto your paper and go from there. Wipe off my brush, change colors, add a little more pink. Oops, got it a little. So I might do something down in here just to show that you can go back and add to it. Oops, get that. As you can tell, I'm picking up some of that, um, the granny apple green. All right, so, and you keep going until you're happy with your background wash is what I'm kind of calling it. All right, and so when you're done with that, what you can do is you can stamp your image. And on this one here, I 
stamped it with Versamark and then embossed it with gold embossing powder. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. Um, and then what that can, what you can do with that is this becomes a card base. So here, this is the same two colors that I used. I just um, had a little more intense color on that. Um, but you can just make this real pretty background and you can play around with different color things. But I stamped that and embossed it. Now you may be asking, Dee, why do you have this on the Stamparatus? Um, the reason being is watercolor paper um, is not even. It's not as smooth as like the thick basic white or the thick very vanilla that we're used to. Um, it's got little ridges. You can kind of hear the roughness of it. So sometimes when you stamp your images, you don't get um, perfect contact at first. Um, so what I like to do is load it on my positioning tool and then stamp it where I want. So whoops, let's kind of do that. So we're not going to see it with this one. We will see it with another technique, but loaded this up with my Versamark, um, put embossing folder, heat emboss it, and then you get that. All right. So that's kind of like, like super easy, right? Um, and you can stamp whatever, once this dries, you can use this as any other paper. You can um, you know, stamp any image that you want on top of it. All right. Well, that's um, probably the first way of using your watercolor pencils is just making a simple background wash to it. All right. So that's, um, I guess, tip number 101. Let me get my little sample page back in here. All right. Another way that you can use or that we can use our um, tool or pencils are we can just use it as a coloring tool. So let me go ahead and I'm going to I'm just kind of going to use both of these color palettes here just back and forth just to give everybody um, a chance to see what it looks like. Um, this is on the standard watercolor pencils. And as you can see, this pencil is used down to the nub after class yesterday. Um, you can treat this just like any other pencil and you need a pencil sharpener. I'm going to use this tray here. So you just, um, you know, if you happen to have um, a pencil sharpener around like a makeup pencil or something, you just go ahead and sharpen it and to get to the next, um, you know, reveal the next part of your pencil. So just a, a pencil sharpener will um, be able to get you your point back. All right. So we can just do standard coloring with this. Um, I'm just going to do one of the gooses. This is from um, the stamp set called Silly Goose. It's got some really cute little characters in here. So this is one of the stamps that um, that I use, the one that they are kind of doing fist bumps. And um, what you can do is you can outline. So um, outlining your image gives it definition. Oh, and I did use the Stazon ink for that. Um, Stazon is a permanent ink that won't um, won't bleed when water hits it. So this is why Stazon's recommended to use with watercolor. So even if you go on to Stampin' Up's um, online store and you look at the Stazon ink, um, what it will say right there is that you know it's made for use with water coloring. Again, so it's um, the type of um, ink that it's in there will not, um, you know, will not, the water won't bleed with it. All right, so I'm just going to kind of add some color here on the beak with the pumpkin pie. And I'm going to like color in the inside. So you can use your um, pencils just for coloring. You don't even have to use any water with it if you don't want to. So here I'm just going to kind of show how you can use your watercolor pencils just to add color. Um, one of the benefits with the um, having the pencils is that um, it's very cost effective. It's a cost effective way to have the color coordination. All right, so that's what our goose looks like um, when I just use the pencil. And it's cute and I've added color to it and not um, any problem at all. All right, so now let's go ahead and we'll take our water painter 
You could use a paintbrush, whatever you'd like. And now I'm going to activate that pigment in the from the pencil and actually spread that color. Oops, I didn't have to clean that because I and I um, want I don't want a whole lot of water on these little places here because it will bleed out from the lines on it. Okay, got that. Change color. Now I've got a pretty dry brush and the reason is I want to make sure that it does not go outside the lines. As you can see, when I add the water, the color gets more intense. It's cute as it is with the pencil, but again, um, we've taken the pencil look and made it into a paint look with our watercolor pencils. Oops. And if you do want to add more color, more intense color to it, if you want to, you can let that dry just a second, or you can come in while the paper's wet and the wetness of the paper will interact with the pigment and you can really, um, you know, you get a more defined color. And I can spread that around a little bit. All right. So um, there's our two little ducks or geese, I guess, because it's called Silly Goose. And then here's an example of what you could make with it. So here I've got, you know, I actually outlined it with another color. Um, so it's, I have the two tones there. Um, and this was my sample one that I made for myself. And it's not perfect, but you know what? I think it's adorable. If you notice here, I kind of used that wash technique that we did previously and with the green and just kind of anchored it a little bit um, so that they weren't just, you know, in mid air. So I kind of made a little grass scene on it to put it on. So um, that's another way that we can use the pencils is just as a coloring um, technique on it. All right, um, I've got one more technique um, on how to use the watercolor pencils 101. Everything's doable, right? Um, please give me your comments and let me know what you think about this. All right, um, I talked about using stays on. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off here just a little bit. Um, you can use your watercolor paper just like you would um, anything else. Um, here, what I have is I've got um, the Dainty Delight bundle, and I'm going to be using this image here. And ahead of time, I've I used the Stamparatus. I did one um, image here to stamp and then die cut. And then because I... Um, I'm doing multiples. I can just, um, you know, cut out the the image itself and then drop it into my Stamparatus template. And that's what I do for class so that they're all uniform um, looks for it. All right. So here's stays on. And, um, and here's this, what I'm going to call like, it's a very delicate, airy um, image here but it does have some open line art in it, which means that it's a it's an opportunity for coloring. I just re-inked my stays on, so I'm hoping that it's had time to do it. I'm going ahead and inking up the image. And on purpose, well, I'm gonna press it down and get a nice firm contact. You didn't see me do that with the other um, the other card, but I can open this up. And this is the beauty of Stamparatus. If you, um, you can probably see how I didn't get good contact all the way through the image. Um, and that's that can be very typical with watercolor paper. I hope that I, I have this that got a little off. Well, I better keep it where it's at. Let's see, do I have another one? I do. Let me do this. I didn't have my paper secured right in there. Let me see if I got another one. Whoops, hang on for me, please. All right, so I got to get this positioned where I had it. It kind of moved on me just a little bit. All right, let's try this again. All right, ink up. And press down. 
And that one stamped pretty good, but if I want it a little stronger, I can ink up the image again and press down. So while you're getting started with using um, stamped images on the watercolor paper, um, I would recommend um, if you have the Stamparatus or a positioning tool to definitely um, get that out until you're familiar with how much pressure that you need to use when you're stamping. All right, so here's this image here. And the, um, the flowers, you know, there's not a whole lot, um, I want it to be colored, but if I use the watercolor pencil, perhaps like I did here, this tip is pretty, pretty big, right? Um, another way to use our um, watercolor pencils is to, um, I'm going to try to find a strong color here. Let's see. Um, I think I'll stick with flirty flamingo here. Um, what we can do is I'm going to take my water um, water painters and I'm going to get some water going on it and we can take the water or take the paintbrush right to the tip of our pencils and I hope you can see this but I do have color that's on the on the tip okay so I'm going to go ahead and add um, like pick up color from the pencil tip now I'm going to add it to my watercolor paper image here stamped and stays on and I am purposely going to give it like a real airiness of a watercolor. I am purposely kind of going outside the lines on it. So watercolor kind of gives you that permission to spread, you know, so it's very, very artsy look that you can have with it. I'm purposely just, you know, hitting the color. So that's um, a way that you can use your, um, think about coloring, but as well as, as you can see, you can um, pick up the color um, from just the tip of your pencil and you can really get just the smallest amount on your paintbrush or your water painter painters. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up close. So super airy and on purpose, but then that's a way I can get um, some real um, detailed paint or, you know, color right where I want it. All right, so let me go ahead and let's see, I'm going to get um, old olive. Now you can use the color palettes that are, um, so get them that are in one of the packs. I'm just kind of showing you some of the colors on both of them. Again, I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit just because we used it a lot at class yesterday. And I've kind of advanced some water in it so I could make sure I could clean off the, the pink. Now I'm going to pick up old olive from the tip can see where I've got it on the tip of my paintbrush and now we'll paint the leaves. And you like you know when to um, add more ink from your watercolor pencils is when the you know the paintbrush runs dry or if you want more of um, an intense look. Um, you would repeat that with all of the leaves. And then what I even did on this, even though it's not an open thing, I just followed the lines of the stems just to give some greenery to it. And I think with the watercolor look and the watercolor pencils, you know, it kind of gives you permission to do that a little bit. And you would continue on until you're happy with it. And then here's a finished look. So as you can see here, I didn't um, complete completely color that. I've got, I even kind of took liberty and colored the, the leaves that are going up here, a pink tone. Um, again, it's not perfect, but it's watercolor. That's the whole point of watercoloring. And here's the card from that. So uh, just a super sweet um, card that's using the watercolor paper and using that technique that we just did here, taking the pencil direct to that. 
and that sentiment celebrate you that is from the um the daisy delight bundle as well all right so let's see oh i've got one more um thing to kind of show you as well so here's like three cards that we did with those three techniques now i'm going to come back with a bonus um and to kind of revisit our embossing powder um here all right so ahead of time what i did as I use that same image from Beautifully Happy, and I heat embossed it with gold emboss powder, embossing powder. What we can do now is um, embossing powder on an image, what that does is it gives a little ridge. So when you use um, your watercolor pencils, that um, it kind of gives a little, um, what do I say, it holds the, um, holds the color from spreading onto the paper. It acts as a little barrier for it to bleed. Um, now, of course, you can do this where if you um, really saturate it, you can do that um, and it will bleed over, but it does kind of give a little bit of a barrier. And let's see here, let's show, like we can just so think outside the lines here. I'm gonna use um, Rich Razzleberry and Bermuda Bay from the original um, set. Um, I'll show you two techniques on this one sample here. I could go ahead and um, color the individual areas here. And then come in with my water painter or brush and activate that. And because the embossing powder is raised, it kind of keeps the, um, the color from going beyond the embossing powder that's already on there. And so you could do that with um, however you'd like, or you know, you can do that all at once, or if you want more control or there's smaller areas, take your brush to the pencil. And like, so these little areas might be hard. And as you can see, I can color over the embossing. And then if I'm like, okay, I want to, maybe I got outside the lines or I got too much water, you can always take your paper towel and you want to daub. So just up and down. And that would take some of the excess water off of the top. So again, I could take the technique that we learned with taking the paintbrush to the tip for it. And when something like this, that would probably be what I would do just because I feel like I have more control on the brush than when I put the pencil. Um, but again, like make a couple samples, play around with it. So here I can color a lot more area um, with the pencil. I'm kind of doing circular motions with it. And maybe on the center, I want it a little bolder. So I'm really gonna use the point of it. And then here's some blue. This is a Bermuda Bay. Again, I could um, take it from the tip if I wanted to and paint like I did on a couple of those panels. And then here, maybe I want a little more color on the veins. So I'm gonna use the top part of the pencil. Watercolor pencils, you guys, this is adult coloring at its best, right? So this is our stamps that we can use with adult coloring. As you can see here, like it's not infallible. It's like it will, if, like, if I get messy, it will go outside of the of the embossing powder, the embossed area. But if I'm careful at the edges, it will stop it. So I'm coming right up to the edge of it. All right, so the more I go around, the more it kind of blends, but I don't want to blend the center as much because I want to keep that um, more intact. Okay, so there's the flower. And of course, this isn't how I'll leave it. This is just kind of for an example. I, wiped off my brush, changing colors now. And so I'm kind of using my brush to push the color right to the edge of the embossing powder. And again, if I wanted to come in while this is a little damp, I could come in with my pencil and that water is going to help give the shadows that I may want on it. All right, let me just kind of show you that again up close on that. And, um, and so you could keep going with that one. 
oh my goodness, where is my sample of that? Um, let me get my sample of that one. Goodness, guys, hang on just a second. Sorry. I'll have it posted here on Facebook. I can't find it, but um, you get the idea, right? Um, you know, so you could color this and then, um, you know, you could do something like that on top of it as well. Um, also, while you, while we're on like the background wash, I forgot to show you, um, you can even make cute little sentiments on that. All I did was just go ahead and I heat embossed. And then on this one, I did the, um, the light technique of putting the pencil of the water or the brush to the pencil and then swirled it over it to give it a, a background on the inside as well. All right. Um, well, please let me know um, if you've um, ever done any of these techniques. Oh, this is just a stepped up version of this one. I'm just wanting to show different colors, how that could look. But this would be um, the class that you would get, you would get materials, including the watercolor paper, um, to have to make three of these, or to make six of these cards, two of each. Obviously, um, like the dies um, and everything wouldn't be there, but you would have paper to use whatever um, you would want to use in your stash there. I will have the, um, the supply list that I used on here if you want your hand at trying um, some watercolor penciling. Um, you would need your own watercolor pencils, of course, but um, the, um, the kit to go would include a sample pack of the paper and you would just um, cut it down to size for whatever you need. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me here today. Let me get the screen turned around again. So, um, and I forgot to tell you, it's like I even wore my watercolor scarf <laughs> here. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but I so enjoyed making these cards and, um, you know, playing with my watercolor pencils again. Um, I think sometimes we get all, um, like we are all about um, the, um, the blends and stuff. And I love the blends, don't get me wrong, but um, you can do different cool techniques with watercolor pencils and the paper and the water painters too. So if you're up for a change, like to mix up how you do your coloring on your stamps and stuff, maybe give it a try. Um, if you like this video, I would love for it if you give me a thumbs up, a like, and please leave a comment. And if you haven't already, um, I invite you to subscribe to either my YouTube channel or like my Facebook page, whichever way that you may find me here today. All right, you guys have a great Wednesday and happy crafting. Bye-bye.